Is red meat inflaming your body? If so, is there any science to back up this belief? Well, the answer to that question is yes. Red meat may cause an inflammatory response in your body after you eat it. Find out in this video why this may be the case and what it may mean for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Sabali Powell. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine, and I'm also a registered nutritionist. Additionally, I've dealt with my own weight issues. So I also understand weight loss from a personal level as well as a professional one. Today, we will explore the science behind what's on your plate and investigate the inflammation potential of fatty grain-fed meat versus lean grass-fed meat. I will discuss the results of one of my clinical trials published a few years ago in which we tested meat from different sources and whether it caused inflammation in the body after eating it. So let's cut through the fat and get to the meat of the matter. First, what is inflammation? Inflammation is a process by which your body's white cells protect you from infection from outside invaders, such as bacteria and viruses. While this sort of short-term inflammation may be beneficial, chronic inflammation can last for months or years and has been linked to many autoimmune and chronic illnesses, including heart disease, obesity, cancer, Alzheimer's, and arthritis. Now, many factors have been thought to increase the risk of inflammation, such as an older age like me, lack of exercise, obesity, a diet that's rich in unhealthy fats and added sugars, exposure to toxins such as air pollutants or dangerous chemicals, drinking too much alcohol or smoking, low sex hormones, stress, and sleep problems. Well, how do we know our bodies are inflamed and at risk for chronic diseases? First, we have to be able to measure inflammation. When inflammation is present in the body, there'll be higher levels of substances known as biomarkers. For example, if a doctor wants to test you for inflammation in your body, they may assess biomarker C-reactive protein or CRP levels in your blood. Now, CRP is a protein that increases in response to inflammation, or they can measure other biomarkers such as TNF-alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha or interleukin-6 or IL-6. Now, these are used just as an indicator of inflammation in clinical settings and in research to understand the severity and progression of various diseases. Now, there are many more biomarkers, but these are common ones. It is important to note, however, that these markers are not disease-specific, but they can indicate the presence of inflammation somewhere in the body. For example, people with diabetes, heart disease, and obesity often have higher levels of inflammatory markers in their bodies. In addition, body fat measurements are strongly correlated with such inflammatory markers in the blood. Now, studies suggest that diet and exercise can also affect inflammatory markers in your body. For example, certain foods have anti-inflammatory properties that can help reduce chronic inflammation, such as foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids like salmon and flaxseed or antioxidants found in fruits and vegetables. Conversely, processed foods, high sugar intake, and saturated fats can increase inflammation. A study of 29 healthy people found that consuming only 40 grams of added sugar from a 375 ml can of soda per day for three weeks led to high C-reactive protein in young healthy men. Participants who drank the daily soda also had higher fasting glucose and unfavorable changes in LDL cholesterol and gained more weight over the study period than those who didn't consume the sugar-laden beverages. Now, this sort of inflammation is called meta-inflammation, which is the term associated with an inflamed state of the body caused by a Western lifestyle that includes energy-dense processed food, high in fat and simple sugars, coinciding with a sedentary lifestyle. So now that we know that sugar causes inflammation, but what about meat high in fat? Well, to answer this question, we examined whether cows fed a commercial feedlot diet caused more inflammation in the body than lean grass-fed meat. So you're probably wondering at this stage, why on earth would commercial red meat cause inflammation in the body? Well, commercial meat is typically from animals raised in concentrated animal feeding operations called CFOs. These animals are often grain-fed, primarily with corn, barley, and soya. Now, several factors may contribute to the inflammatory potential of such commercial meat. Now, commercial meats tend to have a high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids, which may promote inflammation when consumed in excess. The use of antibiotics and growth hormones in CFOs and higher levels of saturated fats in commercial meat may contribute to inflammation. 
So what's the story behind grass-fed meat and inflammation? Well, grass-fed meat comes from animals that graze on a natural diet of grass. This type of meat generally is considered to have a better nutritional profile concerning inflammation. Now, this type of grass-fed meat contains more omega-3 fatty acids, which have anti-inflammatory effects. Grass-fed meat also have higher levels of conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, which has been associated with reduced inflammation and other health benefits. And this type of meat also has higher antioxidant levels, such as vitamin E and carotenoids in grass-fed meat, which can help combat oxidative stress and reduce inflammation. Grass-fed animals are often leaner as well. So to test the difference between the different types of meat on a body's inflammatory response, we did a randomized crossover trial involving 10 healthy subjects published in the British Journal of Nutrition. The participants consumed 100 grams of either commercial kangaroo lean meat sold for eating or commercial fatty wagyu meat, and they were separated by one week apart. Now, several blood draws were taken before and after participants ate the meat to measure blood levels of inflammatory cytokines such as C, CRP, TNF-alpha, and interleukin-6 after the meals. So as you can see by this graph, inflammatory cytokine CRP was significantly higher one hour after eating ragu and non-significantly higher after two hours shown in the blue line compared to when they ate the kangaroo shown in the red line. In this second graph, inflammatory marker levels interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha were significantly higher even two hours after eating wagyu shown in the blue line compared to kangaroo shown in the red line, which means that there was an acute inflammatory response after eating wagyu. We're not sure how long the inflammation would have persisted in the blood if we had taken measurements for three or six hours after they've eaten the meat, but that's for future experiment. Now, the triglyceride or fat levels were also significantly increased after eating wagyu compared to kangaroo, showing that there was more fat coming into the blood from wagyu and barely any coming from kangaroo, which is to be expected because the wagyu is quite a fatty meat. So collectively, the study suggests that high fat commercial wagyu beef consumption may induce an in meta-inflammation reaction which is a low-grade systemic immune response after eating it. This response was not observed in participants when they consumed the commercial lean grass-fed kangaroo meat. Now, why would eating ragu be causing an acute inflammatory response in the body? Well, like I said earlier, the omega-6 fatty acids, antibiotics, hormones, and the high levels of saturated fats in this type of meat may contribute to the inflammation observed in the body after eating it. Now, Wagyu and other commercial cows are typically fed a diet of corn, barley, and soybeans, as I mentioned, which are high in carbohydrates and promotes fat deposition. Basically, it fattens them up really quickly. Therefore, Wagyu meat has highly marbled intramuscular fat because of the breeding and feeding process. Now, Wagyu is relatively high in fat, sometimes more than 30 to 40%, of which 40% is saturated. Now, kangaroo may not have elicited an inflammatory response because these animals are usually grass-fed animals and therefore often leaner. Kangaroo meat contains 4% fat on average, with 1% of this being saturated. Grass-fed meat also contains higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids, conjugated linoleic acid, and contains antioxidants such as vitamin E and carotenoids, which may help reduce the inflammation. However, the study is not without its obvious limitations. I think further research can be done using lean grass-fed cows as well as the kangaroo and wagyu. And blood measurements can also be taken longer to see how long that inflammation persists after eating these types of meat. So the question really is, how do we translate the findings of these studies? Or in other words, what does a sort of inflammation mean in your body after eating high-fat commercial meat? Well, to understand this, you need to understand the difference between acute and chronic inflammation, and that not all inflammation is bad. Acute inflammation usually happens for a short duration and occurs right after the trigger. It may be just on one-off and may last for a few hours or a day. It is characterized by increased blood flow, the presence of immune cells, redness, heat, swelling, and pain in the infected area. Now, this type of inflammation is typically a protective and localized response to injury or infection. For example, exercise causes an acute inflammation. It's known to cause temporary damage to the muscles, releasing a cascade of inflammatory responses. But in the long term, regular physical activity can lead to an overall reduction in inflammation. 
Therefore, exercise can be a powerful tool for the prevention of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes. Regular physical activity also reduces symptoms of depression, anxiety, and enhances brain health and can improve overall well-being. Now, chronic inflammation, on the other hand, is more of a worry because it can last for months or years and can result from the body's failure to eliminate the cause of the acute inflammation. This then disrupts normal bodily functions and the body mistakenly attacks normal cells. As I said before, some inflammation can actually be really good in the short run. It's part of your immune system's natural response to heal an injury or fight an infection, but it's supposed to stop after that. However, if it becomes long-lasting in your body, that can be bad for you. This is why long-term chronic inflammation is observed in many conditions such as asthma, tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease, as well as conditions such as obesity, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Of course, this still leaves you trying to limit chronic inflammation at all costs. So let's come back to the study and ask, do I think eating commercial fatty meat is bad for inflammation in your body? Well, the thing is, one doesn't usually eat fatty meat like this several times a day. It's probably more like a once in a while item. The saying is the dose makes the poison at the end of the day, which can be different for everyone. I think the question you have to ask yourself is, how do you feel after eating fatty grain-fed meat? In my opinion, if you feel inflamed, then it may be a red flag. For example, sometimes I feel inflamed after I eat certain things like ice cream or chips, my joints feel stiff and achy and my workouts are really sluggish. And this may mean that my dietary choice the day before may not have been optimal, as it has obviously had a negative impact on my body. As long as this doesn't continue long term into a chronic situation and end up causing some sort of chronic disease, then I usually don't worry about these once off situations. Now, I'm not comparing red meat to ice cream or chips by any means. All I'm saying is that if you are concerned about aspects of your health, then I suggest you go to your health professional and request them to measure the inflammatory markers in your blood before and after you eat meat or any other products. If you are being inflamed by eating anything, you can discuss with your doctor whether you should cut it out of your diet. This being said, I truly advocate for getting enough protein for good health and I've done several videos on this subject. I am a true omnivore. I love eating meat from many different sources, including chicken, lamb, and beef, and, but I tend to stick with the leaner cuts. I think leaner cuts of meat may benefit those who are trying to lose weight and have other health issues. A study conducted by McPhee et al. in 2011, published in the British Journal of Nutrition, examined the concentrations of fatty acids in humans after a randomized double-blind study of 20 human subjects either eating a grass-fed beef diet or a grain-fed beef diet for four weeks. Results show that plasma and platelet concentrations of omega-3 fatty acids were significantly higher in subjects consuming the grass-fed meat compared to those subjects consuming the grain-fed meat. So if you have access to grass-fed meat, great. But if not, then any kind of meat is probably going to be better than eating a bag of chips and cookies any day. Another point I want to make is that you have to look at your whole diet in the context of eating a diverse diet, meat is only one component. Ideally, one should focus on consuming whole, minimally processed foods that are rich in nutrients and antioxidants and have anti-inflammatory properties. These include many fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins such as fish, poultry, beans, and legumes, and healthy fats. Now, specific foods that may help you reduce inflammation include olive oil, tomatoes, nuts such as walnuts and almonds, fatty fish such as salmon and sardines, fruits including blueberries and strawberries. So let's say hypothetically, fatty grain-fed meat may be acutely affecting you by increasing inflammatory markers in the blood. However, if you are getting lots of anti-inflammatory foods from the rest of your diet, then this inflammation by the meat may be tapered by all the foods. I believe that sometimes it's hard to determine what an individual food is doing to your body in isolation when you're also eating a well-rounded healthy diet. So how do you know if you have chronic inflammation? Well, some of the most common signs of chronic inflammation include body discomfort, including joint stiffness, tendonitis, and muscle pain, sleep disorders like insomnia and sleep apnea and chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, and mood disorders, GI complications like constipation and diarrhea, weight gain or unexplained weight loss, 
and frequent infections. So in summary, while grass-fed lean meat has a more favorable profile for inflammation, it's just one piece of the puzzle. The overall impact on inflammation in your body depends on your entire diet and also lifestyle factors, such as sleep, exercise, stress, etc., which can play a significant role in your health and potentially reduce the risk of chronic diseases. I love to hear what you take away from these videos, so be sure to comment below and let me know. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone helping me get to 5,000 subscribers last week. I didn't think it would happen so soon after launching my channel just a few months ago. I'm so glad and grateful there are people out there who are enjoying my content, which motivates me to keep going. I also have many more resources that will help complement this video and help you with your weight loss journey. So be sure to click on the link in the description below. But to really get the results you want, please make sure you come back to watch next week's video. If you've enjoyed the contents of this video, please like and subscribe for new videos every week and share it with anybody who might benefit from it. Thanks so much for watching. This is Dr. Savali Powell. See you next week.